we're going to be making some buildings. No, wait, come back. I know I've made loads on the channel before. These are going to have a twist to them. Hello and welcome to the Battle in Barrow and it's another video where I make some buildings. Whoa. You might be asking why have I why am I making some more buildings? In fact the top channel uh, video on the channel is where I make these buildings here. This has the most views um, which is great. They are nice looking buildings. Why am I making more? I've made others since then as well. Well, the thing is, when I made these and all the other buildings, I made these with sort of war games uh, in mind. So really, all these are for is for blocking uh, terrain, you know, so you can position your models out of line of sight and so forth. Even skirmish level games, really, you don't go inside buildings as such. More times, probably the closest way if you have a ruin, you climb around and I've made those kind of buildings. But for the most part, for war games, you don't need to do worry about the inside so you know the inside is just you don't have to worry about it but i'm an rpg -er as well and when it comes to rpgs you need to get inside um really uh, so what i wanted is a system where i could have a building on the table if you go inside uh, you can sort of lift it up and reveal the floor uh, in the past, the way this has been done is you'd leave the walls on the floor, but that's not very good. So you just lift like the roof off and you'd have the walls in. That's not very good for players because uh, they're sitting around the table, they won't be able to sit in. So really you want to do away with the walls. So I'm utilising the system of my dungeon tiles, which is imaginary walls. Uh, the walls are implied, so that is what we're going to be doing here. I did catch a video by Black Magic Craft who sort of... Did a similar video as well, inspired by this, in a similar sort of project. So yeah, I felt quite good. Uh, so it's going to be sort of uh, utilising some stuff from that video, uh, but in my own unique twist. Um, the other thing about this video is, um, as well as being able to get inside, is I wanted these buildings to be modular, uh, as in you can put them together in different configurations and come up with different sort of building types having as high as you want as low as you want different roofs different sort of styles different bits and pieces so that is the other aspect of this video is you know uh, these bits buildings should be the only ones i need for standard buildings i might in the future in the same sort of system make different shaped buildings like l-shaped buildings these are just going to be the same going to be the same dimensions of this building so um yeah, that's uh, enough of me waffling. Blooming hell, almost three minutes of me waffling. Let's just start making these buildings. We are going to need four pieces of foam core. Each is a inch and three quarters uh, high. Uh, we need two that are five and a half inches long and two that are four and a half inches long. And when it's pieced together, the five and a half inch piece will become six inches. Well, next we need to uh, cut out the window for it. For this, I just measure half inch in from the bottom and draw a line. Uh, it's then an inch high for the window, and the inch windows are half inch uh, wide. And for the door, it's going to be a quarter of an inch down from the bottom, so and it's an inch and a quarter wide. And this will be consistent across all the buildings I do. I'm not going to show you how to do the doors and windows in any great detail in this video because there is a dedicated video on the channel uh, about it and I'm just using the same techniques there so I'll just link you to that video. But for now we need to cut these out before we can glue uh, the walls together. So that's the windows cut out uh, but before I uh, glue it all together I just want to come in with a texture tool might not be able to see it but just round the window frame let's get score in a wood grain texture just for when we come to paint it and decorate it later on before we start assembling it we can also glue some horizontal uh, beams in these are made from coffee stirrers and i've pre-cut a load of these and you will need a load so all we're going to do is um we don't need any at the end because there'll be at the end of the long piece so when it goes to go for the four inch piece that else goes there i don't need any around the door because that'll be done by the door frame itself one thing we'll do is just put two bits there 
So what we really need is some either side of the window. So for this piece, it's just going to be these two. Uh, for this piece, it's going to be here, here, one there. The best thing to do for this really is to look at um, Tudor buildings. Do an image search for Tudor buildings. Uh, so I'm not going to tell you what to do here. This is entirely up to you. Uh, I might have an angle bit there or something or a bit like that. So now I'm going to do this off camera, but that's the general principle before we assemble it. It just makes it a bit easier. With our pieces uh, done, um, it's now time to glue them together. Uh, for this, I'd recommend a set square to help level it out and something to lean it against. Um, I would actually recommend buying cheap Lego blocks and making a high set square, which is something I might do in a future video. But for now, we'll just do it the old fashioned way. I'm going to need some glue. Yeah, that's going to be that side, that's going to be that side. We need some glue and we are going to attach um, this to here. It goes on the inside of the shorter piece. So, I apologize for beating my uh, microphone then. Uh, glue it together. And just use the set square to help level this out. Do the same for the uh, other wall. Now I want the window opposite the door so it's solid here for the windows on this side and solid here for the windows on this side. So if you do get to look inside you're not going to break the magic too much that you know it's an empty um, facade of a house rather than a real house. And the reason I am using white glue rather than PVA glue rather than say Something like a hot glue gun, it gives me more working time to square it all up and so forth. And you've got hours worth of working time, so if something does happen, you can keep coming back, checking, and you'll be fine. And yeah, that levels up there lovely. So I'm just gonna carry on doing this. And what you'll notice is I have some M bits that I don't have. Put uh, wood on. I shall do that when it's dry, and I'll show you that when it's dry. So we've got a piece. So okay, let's leave that to dry. Once it's dry, we are going to apply some Mod Podge into the uh, gaps in between the um, bits of wood to add a bit of texture and. What I do is I add some uh, brown paint to the Mod Podge just to save a bit of time later on undercoating it. You want it quite lumpy, quite thick. The more you do, the better it's going to look. And once you've applied it all to all the uh, sides, you can allow that to dry. Uh, also, you can make a top floor which is made in much the same way, just without a door, and you'll have to mod podge that too. Whilst we're waiting for that to dry, we can work on the floors. These are made from uh, six mil insulation foam, uh, and the dimensions are ever so slightly wider than the um, piece. So where it's four inches, it's four and two. Where it's going to be six inches total, it's going to be six and two. Uh, just to give you a bit of a leeway for in a minute. So, what I'm going to do is measure out um, quarter inch uh, floorboards. And what will happen is the two outer ones will be slightly wider due to that extra width. And 
Now I'm going to come in with a, a ballpoint pen and score in the floorboards. Next we're going to divide the floor up into boards. I'm going to use the width from my ruler here to help me. So what I'm going to do is just draw a line every other board. And use the width of the ruler and line it up to what the line we've just drawn. And then do the same but on hitting the bit that we skipped last time. Hopefully this makes sense. I'll show you when I've done it. Like so, and to repeat that, go back to the ones we hit in the first time. Next up, we are going to come in with a wire brush and we're going to add a wood grain texture in. Um, I am going to put on a mask because you don't want to be breathing in the dust. Come in with a uh, sculpting tool would like and just add wood grain effect to the sides because this will be seen from the outside of your house. While we've got the uh, sculpting tool, um, what we're going to do is, I'd call this optional but it does make it look way better and that's just adding the nail holes into the piece. So it's two there and two there on each end of floorboard. So it does take a bit of time, not difficult, just takes time. but the end result is worth it. And for each house you're probably going to need three floors like so, although uh, really it depends on how many houses you're going to set up. You may not need many floors, you can reuse these. If you're only going to set up two houses and you know you're only going to ever set up two houses, just make two of these even if you've got multiple houses made for different styles of house. Um, but if obviously you're going to have more houses, you'll need more of these. This is what it rests upon. But these, you'll need one of these per floor of a house. The upper floors are going to need a staircase put in. So for this, uh, it's I've got pieces of foam that are an inch thick. Six pieces that are three quarters of an inch wide-ish. And one that is an inch by an inch, which will be the landing. All I'm going to do now is glue these together. Now we need to work out where the stairs are going to go. For this, I'm going to put on the stairs that go from the ground to the first. I will put, put them here at the back. And for the second, uh, first to the second, which will probably be the attic, I might put it over here. It just can't be in the same place. Um, one thing to note is, if I bring this in, it's still drying from Mod Podge. When you position your stairs we're talking about at the back, this will fit over here, so you have to make allowances when you cut in for foam core. So what's best to do and you want a little landing on here so you can come upstairs. So put it in this one I'm going to put in an inch here. Here. So I'm gonna probably put it in from here onwards. So I'm gonna yeah, so that'll be this bit here. First one I'm going to do is put a line there, and it's going to be a two inch hole, and I want it an inch wide uh, hole. So that is going to be our hole here. So what I'm going to do is just cut that out. Like so. And all I'm also going to do is just add a bit of texture to the end. Give it a wood grain texture on this bit here. Just for when we paint and dry brush. 
Once we've got the mud podge out, just to make our lives easier, I'm going to uh, paint the inside of this bit here. And I'm also going to paint just along the edges and just the underneath, really, just so when we say so make it easier once it's all glued in. And so, uh, take your time to paint these bits. And when that's dry, I'll flip it over and paint the top bit. So, basically, I'm going to uh, pre paint this or undercoat it now before we assemble it just to make it easier just so I can move it around and manipulate it. I do want to get the underside done, so I want to hide all the pink so you don't see it when you're looking in. And once the stands have dried, you are going to need a uh, banister rail, maybe, you don't have to. Uh, one thing to know, you're only going to need one because the stairs will rest against the side of the wall. Uh, like so, so you're just going to need a banister rail on the side where there's no uh, wall. Now you don't have to, this is optional of course. This I'm just going to glue a uh, piece of foam. I'll glue to the side and then when that's done I'll glue the whole piece in. I'll just need to make sure it is cut to size first. And then I'm going to use this one for this. So in there, that's what I'm going to do for this. Is I'm just going to come in a load of glue. You probably use hot glue for this actually, but I don't have my hot glue to hand at the moment, so glue that in. And then leave that to dry, paint it, and then glue it on into the place. I'm not going to show you that. That would just be too much, too boring. And then when it when the floor's in, it will rest like that. Of course. That's the stairs going down sorted. Well, what about stairs going up? Well, for this, imagine this was the floor here. Here, this one. So, here's the entrance. You'd come in here and you've come up. Right. <laughs> okay, so this is the ground floor of the door so you've entered the door here and you can, you'll be able to see a flight of stairs going up but when you enter it you remove this and we'll just see a blank piece what do you need for this you need a little just pair of stairs indicating where these stairs would be uh, for this this is just going to be made from off cuts of foam and foam core and uh, so i've just got bits of foam that i am going to uh, glue together these are the actual stairs we cut out, the stair hole we cut out. Just going to glue this together like so. And then these are going to have side bits attached. We want to take a wee bit more time than what I'm doing here because I'm doing it on camera. And it's have a sort of back plating. There we go. So Again, leave this to dry, paint it brown, done. With it all undercoated in brown now, it is time to begin the painting. Uh, we are going to paint it in a uh, dark beige cream colour first and then dry brush it with a lighter one. Hopefully they're coming out on camera. Okay, hopefully you can see that. So I'm just going to go across and do that. Now, I'm going to make sure I only get within the... Uh, walls it's the sort of wattle if you like itself so it's going to be a case of this is easier to do before you glue the uh, floor onto the top which we'll do once it's painted then come in it might take a few coats as well don't worry about that 
Whilst we got this tan out that we're using, we might as well uh, dry brush all the wood. So that's the floors. The uh, wood on the actual building itself. Next coming with a lighter uh, beige color, tan color. That's gonna come in and paint the middle bits of the wall. I'm going towards the top and towards the bottom, just the middle. Okay, it's now time to try and assemble it. I say try because I have a cat climbing around my area, uh, which makes things very difficult. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue the door in into place. Now it's all painted and bash the mic. So simple PVA glue and we'll just slot that in. It just makes it easier to uh, paint having it not all assembled at that time. They would sort of dry brush the walls without worrying about the door. And plus I pre-make doors anyway, so that's in there. We now need to uh, glue in the stairs. He's going to go into the back bit here. Yeah, it's a simple case of glue. that in and then we need to glue the floor in we want to put some heavy bricks onto it Bricks, books onto it, put bricks on it, I guess, uh, to allow it to dry, and just do the same with the other floor. When we're at this stage, it's time to give it a wash, including the floors. So, uh, this is a homemade black wash uh, I've used throughout the videos. Uh, so I'm just going to use this for the uh, all pieces again going over everything wood wall it just instantly weathers that brightness of the wall and daub uh, the wall section I forget what it is wall and daub daub isn't it let me know in the comments because I can never remember just turns it from looking like that all nice and pristine to a bit worn and weathered and you see all the uh, work you put in with the Mod Podge finally coming to fruition. I'm just going to go through and do that to all the pieces. Hmm, this probably helps without a cat being in a way. Hmm. Okay, next up we are going to get some uh, brown wash. It's just Games Workshop's Agrax Earthshade and I'm going to Water it down ever so slightly and just apply it around the top and bottom of the pieces. Maybe I'm not wrong. Uh, this is a bit of weathering, really. So, another weathering step. I've got this old camo green. It's gone quite hard, which is great for this. So I'm going to come in with a dry brush and a bit of water. I'll get some on my paintbrush and I'm just gonna get some over the windows and this will be mainly in corners this is and uh, maybe at the bottom of the door here this is where you'd see a bit of mold going Here on some of the words here. With this step, I would say uh, less is more. Come in here. Going to move on to the windows now. I'm not going to go into too much detail as there is a video on the channel going over this in full. I'm just using this body mesh as outlined in that video, and I'm just going to paint 
a lot of it black. So to get the size of it, as per all the other videos I've done using this stuff, you just put it over the top, come with a pencil and draw the size of it. And what that'll do, that'll give you enough. But you won't see it on camera, it'll give you enough to be able to cut it out. Uh, you then would glue that in, uh, pushing it in from the back, putting glue around the edge here and pushing it in from the back, like I've done in a window video, but I did a revis in old projects video and I did coaching in, which had the method where I did windows like this in originally. And with that, and I'll refer you to that video, I added in bits of um, acetate. This is overhead projection uh, printy stuff that I just cut to the same size. And you add that in behind so then you get uh, glass windows uh, looking something like this you get a reflection in so refer to that video for more details but that's it for the windows let's work on the roof um, take a piece of foam that is two and a half inches high and six inches along um, put a mark here at two and four what we're going to do is this corner to the two, draw a line. This corner to the four, draw a line. Uh, and now, if you go from this line to the corner, what you'll have is your two pieces, end piece of the roof, uh, which you can cut out. Don't throw these pieces away, put those to one side. Here's your two pieces that we're going to use. These pieces here, what you can do, flip it over, put them together, and what you will have here, if you glue these together, is, is an extra piece. And here's one I made earlier that I glued together. Uh, and what you can do just to hide this when you put it in, just, which we're going to do in a bit, put a beam down there. And you've got an extra, a price of two, you get one extra. And it's just a good way to save on foam. I've then clad the triangles with the, um, cocktail sticks. You can make this as simple as or as complex as you like. I've just mirrored it on the other bit. But now we need the roof itself. It's going to be made from a bit of corrugated card. I've got some thin stuff here, but it doesn't really matter too much. Um, using corrugated card because it's a wage product. If you're having Amazon deliveries or any delivery, you're probably going to get some corrugated card. Size wise, I've measured a seven by seven square and halfway down the middle, I've uh, put a halfway mark. And I made sure that's down, running down the corrugated side. So that'll be where we fold it for the roof. I've then got some more bits and pieces here. So what I've done is come in quarter of an inch either side and draw on a line. And this will give us a little uh, Bit where it's wider at the top than at the bottom and i'll come in another quarter of an inch here and draw a line here this will be where we glue these two it's terms where we glue these two like this giving us a total of six inches from here to here uh, which is great because that is the size of our buildings so we'll cut this out and i'll show you what i mean and uh, when you've got it cut out you want to kind of uh you can score it or do what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put a ruler down where I want it to fold. And because of the corrugated nature, you can get that fold line where you want it. And as you can see here, if I cut it out fully, a bit eager there. If I cut out the uh, these lines, we end up with is something that when the roof's done 
it is higher at the top than the bottom, giving it a bit of visual interest. Got a hot glue gun warming up here because we are going to use that to glue these pieces in here for speed and quickness. And what you'll notice is it will give you a bit of overhang here, which is great for when we do the tiles. To glue it in, it's going to run a bead of glue down the side here and jam that up to the line. And that felt folded over. And I shall do this side next just to make life easier for me. Now with that done, I can quickly run some glue down this side, this side, and we can get it glued into place. Now all we've got to do is the tiling. Um, I've done that so many times on the video, I'm not going to show you that. Um, and I'm going to put a chimney on it. I won't show you that. If you want to see how that is done, watch the uh, revisiting the coaching in project I did. And that will tell you how to do that. One thing I am going to do though is uh, glue some pieces onto the end here. So I'm just going to come in with coffee stirrer. I'm going to roughly work out where I want it to be. I want it edged in the end. Like so Let's trim it later on. I'm gonna have that there. And I've got the hot glue gun. I can get that into place. So that will be flush with the roof. Now I can run right into place. Uh, for chimneys, uh, if you can't get hold of like a solid block of foam, like I can't, it's quite difficult to get hold of here. But you got this kind of foam, the 10 or 6 mil insulation foam. What you can do is cut out blocks that are roughly the size you want for your chimney and just glue those together. Uh, these the layers here are then your layers of your bricks and you just would come in and score in a brick pattern into them. So that's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to glue these, let them dry. And then score in a texture, a brick texture pattern and then texture them up with texture roller so to make it make the surface nice and brick like and hey ho we got a nice little uh, chimney off the anglet size of the roof how to do a roof in the previous videos um got a chimney here uh that i've made using the method i outlined just now um, this is all covered as i mentioned in the coaching in video uh so i'm not going to go over it again so just make this video too long all I'm going to do now is undercoat it in brown. I've already mod done the Mod Podge here to give it some texture, but I'm just going to undercoat it in dark brown. I'm going to paint it in exactly the same method I painted coaching in, where it'll be a reddish brown on the tiles. This will be painting brickwork. So, what about alternative to the bottom half of the building? Okay, so what about if you want to make a sort of stone um, building similar to this? This is a an old model I make for wargaming where you can't get inside. I'm trying to do something like that. So the first thing to do is to measure out your pieces as normal. Um, if you've got a six mil foam board and probably um, insulation foam, I'd recommend that. I'm using foam board here, and what I've done is I've removed the um, 
the back in. Unfortunately, we don't have cheap dollar store type foam here, and it was a bit of a nightmare. So I'd probably recommend uh, using insulation foam. But if you do have isopropyl alcohol, rub that onto it, and it does help you get rid of any uh, paper. So come in, and we're going to put. half inch quarter of an inch quarter of an inch uh, lines in so and I'll probably do this up off camera now so I'm gonna mimic the this look the texture got on there that works fine for me textures it so I shall do that off camera. And now all we do is assemble it as normal. Uh, I won't show that on camera because you've already seen it once. Assemble it and then undercoat it in black and Mod Podge. For the side annex or entrance porch, we are going to need some foam. Um, I've got, this will be the front. And this is it's about two inches wide and it's two inches high square and these are an inch and a quarter wide at uh, two inches long here but the back is two and a quarter inches and you need two of those which will be the side pieces and these are going to attach either side like this cut out a hole for the door and we will of course need a door we got that we'll need a little bit of floor so this is a little bit of floor that will big enough to hold the piece we're gonna I'm going to assemble this together paint it and I'll show you it when it's done it's gonna this is gonna be that simple we will also need to roof it another thing we can do on the ground floor is make a sort of shop front or a building with a overhang on um, and the reason I say shop front or building with an overhang uh, the buildings for the overhang in that I'm going to be making I will use a shop front so for this it's going to be made in exactly the same way where we make the um, walls up but for the shops fronts I'm going to have a larger window so you can see inside and see the goods and the side bits are these are an inch shorter so these are three inches rather than four inches so that when they go together when you put the uh, top part on you're going to get an overhang here uh, so yeah what I'm going to do is construct these clad them, paint them etc and we should come back later on when I've done that the lower floor is uh, I've painted it and constructed it and so what it looks like when you put the floor on top is you have this overhang which is great but what I want to do now is add some beams jutting out. So I'm just going to make those from bits of foam that I am going to cut up and texture. So they're going to be foam six mil thick. So we'll probably make them about thick, six mil thick too. So I'm just going to cut a load of these up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to texture them give a wood grain texture and then I shall paint them brown so they match the same color as the wood let's work on the shop signs for this I'm going to make use of a paper clip and what I'm going to do is bend it hopefully outwards like so and just chop down the uh, end bits here using some pliers just to shorten this bit on both sides because one uh, paper clip will get you two hanging hooks and then just squeeze these back down and now whilst I got this like this I can hold it there and paint use this to paint it black so now we are on to doing the shop front sign now one of the pegs I put in was slightly longer and that is deliberate we are going to make some shop front signs out of chipboard uh, you can just go along and have some plain ordinary cardboard like rectangle card ones 
or you can make it a bit more interesting. You can sort of round the corners, just on the top there. Do a concave on each corner. Have a circle bit at the top. Circle bit either side. One looks like a, a kind of shield. Or maybe one that's kind of that sort of shape. You know, you can really go to town with the shapes from. But we need to attach them to our uh, noggin here, and we're going to use paper clips as mentioned just now that are painted black but we need to get these here and the way we're going to do this we're going to attach them to the noggin half inch apart and then attach them half inch apart here so we can know it always fit and always fit so what I'm going to do first is cut down a paper clip here about that much uh, use that to get the other side so and they're quite small from this bit here and I'm going to use a ruler just to gauge where they need to go I'm going to first this one in wherever to begin with to be honest and they're going to hook this way so the hook's going to go on this side see that's the hook's going to go here and then from here I need to then uh, of course this is quite tricky to do on camera showing you and doing it so hopefully you can see what I'm trying to achieve like that now they're half inch apart so now I've got a sign I've done already for the coaching in so I can actually just test to make sure that works which it does so now I'm just going to come to glue them. So for this, I'm actually going to use PVA. Just give me a bit of working time. But feel free to use super glue if you want to have done faster. Now I'm just putting the end bits into the glue, getting a load of glue on. Popping them in. I think I can use this to try to the same height. So make sure it still swings, so it'll get on there. Which it does. It was lovely. I leave that to dry and now we can work on the shop signs. Um, it's going to be a lot simpler. Uh, it's best to. I'm not going to do it on camera, but you can paint them to how you want. Coming with with this, you can use super glue, but we're going to make them longer. And you just glue them here onto the back, half inch apart, and you end up with something like this. And I, yeah, I've spread them, turned them, what I found, turned that way just for ease of hooking. Feel free to do them how you want. They just hook on nicely like that. To attach the paper clips to the back of the sign, all I do is cut the piece, cut the paper clips down to the size, they're going to be longer, and then just measure out a little half inch gap uh, either side, and I'm going to hopefully get some super glue out. So, what can we do for the top floor? So, well, the first thing we can do is well, two things we can actually do. One, make an or ori, an ori? Yeah, I'll do Alright, from here and to add some bay windows in. The techniques for both of these are going to be pretty much the same, it's just going to be a difference in scale. For the Orrery, 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 I cannot say that today, which is perfect as I'm recording this. But anyway, what we need is a two bits of foam board that are an inch wide, inch and three quarters high at one end and an inch and a half at the other end. So this would be basically the height of your wall piece and then you need another bit that is inch and a half wide uh, three inches long with a window cut out and these will uh, form the orrery I can say it in my head perfectly it's gonna be fun right we'll try and skip past this get it done as quick as possible and we are going to glue that together 
uh, first I shall put a roof on it I shall uh, put all the uh, timber in on we'll paint it I won't put the flooring yet and I'll put the window in first and then we'll come back and do the floor so that'll be for that for bay windows I'm gonna make two of these similar uh, bit uh, way of doing it so these are going to be half inch with the same height dimensions uh, and this is going to be an inch and a uh, half wide and these will go together like so um, I will also when I do come to make the top bit I'll also put windows in but I won't uh, put the glass in but I do want the windows in so if I put lights inside it will shine through the bay windows but these will go over like here like so forming bay windows so I shall do get to a stage off camera where I've constructed them painted them and put the um, glass in and we I'll come back when I'm ready to do the floors so I've jumped back once I've sort of got to where I want to be so I've constructed this and painted it and put the glass in uh, so I said the reason for this is because I'm gonna put a roof on it and a floor on it and glue it to here and it's easier just to paint it and get the window in now do it this way rather than put it in and worrying about painting over it by accident um, quite a simple procedure I'm just going to use hot glue for this and then glue this on first glue them first And then what I'm going to do is glue the roof on. And for the floor for this little uh, place, um, a bit of foam that I've cut to size, painted, scored up, um, and glue it here. But what I want to do. Floor space. I want to glue it just slightly forward so that when this sits here, like this, because we've got an overhang here, it will just uh, do about that much, just so I know, just so it doesn't jut out too much. And the bay windows are going to be done in exactly the same way uh, so I won't bore you with that on camera I shall do it off camera okay so we've done the floors ground and upper floors but what about the roof what can we do to add you know a bit of variety to the roof uh, we can add dormers uh, to it or uh, we can add a, a sort of extra bit that comes out here and a little dormer window uh, these have been done on the uh, coaching in but I'll quickly go over now so for a triangular dormer we're going to take a piece like this which is the same dimensions as the roof here I've cut a window in it just for fun and what I've done is I've angled it here at 45 degrees um, just for ease of gluing it together and pre-painted it again for ease. Uh, next we'll need a roof. Here's one I've got going. Uh, I haven't properly fully painted the X so I went to a tile it. But here I just painted the underneath black so that when this sticks in uh, you'll see black underneath. And the reason for the 45 degrees is so I can stick this in and it juts straight up. Next we need a roof that goes from to join it together and this is going to make be made from card again and it's just basically the distance here and here and then the distance here so which you end up with something like this so in my case it's three and a quarter inches either side here so that's three and a quarter three and a quarter giving us six and a half and then from the center point i'll mark two and a quarter inches give me this line and then i'm just going to glue it together here like so and tile it which i shall do now to make a smaller dormer Gonna need another roof and some chipboard. Uh, what I've got here is a piece of chipboard that is an inch and a half high, and then this B 
bit here is an inch and a quarter uh, just to give it a bit of shape I've marked out the window which I'll cut out and do off camera now the top bits here are an inch and a quarter two and it's scored down here folded up so that when it is glued on something like that cutting off nicely here uh, so again what I'm going to do is um, assemble this off camera I shall make a uh, roof for it uh, how I've done the other pieces but you don't need to see all that you've got the idea now but that is how to do a dormer so what about a roof that is uh, thatched can we do that sure of course we can um, so here I've made a basic structure of a roof with a wooden bit in the middle and we're just going to do it like the uh, thatched roof tutorial that is on this channel so I'm just going to glue some fur onto it for the thatch water it down with PVA and so forth and we'll have a thatched roof uh, if you want to see how that is done in more detail watch the thatched roof video which is uh, where I show you how to build a uh, the uh, water in from the Lord of the Rings movies uh, just because I wanted to do some thatched roofing but this is the basic technique but you can do that on your modular roofs too and with that we're done and normally at this stage I'd be sort of setting up a scene for us to look at and have a showcase but for this that's not the point of the buildings really um, I've made buildings before on the channel this is to show off their modularity so anyway I thought I'd do is to show you different setups so here is just effectively a basic building two floors and so if your party goes inside or your war band if you're playing a skirmish game you can lift the top up uh, drop some stairs in like so to indicate where the stairs are if they then decide they want to go upstairs you can take the top off and you've got the stairs going down here and you can have another set of stairs going up into the attic they go up there you can do likewise you have your stairs there and so forth so you got that you got the playability of getting in inside which is great but of course you can have these in different configurations so if you just wanted it as a single floor you can get away with that you can also go a bit crazy and have it you know if you're in sort of I don't know Warhammer world where they have really tall buildings knock yourself out put multiple floors on there you got a really tall house which is great um, the other thing you could do is you could what we've shown how to do is have a stone bottom on the building put that on and you've got a different looking house all with the same components likewise you can have that as tall as you want or single floor because of the roof nature you can have put different roofs on so with this you can totally change it and have it as a sort of more thatched cottage great you can uh, have different to this this is all just with this one design so we can go back to a basic building and then let's change out the top floor so now we can have some upper bay windows in there okay we can do likewise and have someone's gonna have to correct my knee so you can have that in here on the overhang here you can even go sort of crazy and have two lots in there so you guys really starting off this basic house you can have a totally different house um, okay uh, the roofs you can change the roof you can have a dormer 
on it. Like so, so you've got these dormers. You can have a different style of dormer. So here we are, we're really building up different styles of houses, like just unique, get inside and so forth. We can even have an overhang with the uh, shop signing we made. So we put that there. I've really, uh, no, nope, that's not going to be good enough. So, I'm even thinking about going back to the most popular video on the channel, uh, those buildings that I made, and converting those to be the same style as this. We'll, get, we'll give me more stone bases, more roofs. I think that'd be quite interesting. But you know, if you don't want the shop sign, just take the shop sign off, and you're just left with an overhang. really really happy with these um so when i do buildings in the future they will be made using this system in mind um and i might have a think about other things i can do oh before i go yeah what am i doing let's go back and there's more that we can do there is more that we can do with them but as i said let's have some basic house again i am going to uh all different style of buildings I make now are going to be based on this system and I'm going to be thinking about different styles of houses that can be compatible with these but anyway so we have here we can put on a porch like so so again that changes the shape of the house the overall shape of the house we can put on an outdoor shed So again, you've got a totally different style house to what we started out with, but all compatible, all, all play, you can use these all the same, and look at that, that's a great house. <laughs> so yeah, that's it for this one though, um, hope you enjoyed it, if you did, leave a like, comment and all that stuff in the uh, comment section, uh, I want to thank the patrons that allow me to uh, buy materials to make such projects as like this you guys are awesome i love you all until the next video guys stay safe take care